this is Tom, a.k.a. Jerry O'Hare for Tabletop Tap Room. And this week, we are reporting on some after results of some gaming conventions. This past weekend was GaryCon, a convention in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, attended by 3,500 people. And all the reports coming out of GaryCon say, best convention ever. Congratulations, Luke Gygax. So <laughs> uh, we're not actually covering GaryCon because this is an episode in RPG Stupid, and we're going to be covering a, another convention that happened the same weekend in the same town in Lake Geneva, Michigan, called TSR Con 2. But before we get to that, let me just say thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. And if you've not subscribed, please do consider hitting the like, subscribe, and bell icon and help me build the channel. Also, this is the point where I do a little plug uh, for our merch, our Cafe Press Store. I'm not doing that today. Instead, I'm going to have a link in the show notes for a town that burned down. There was a wildfire uh, last year, and it leveled this town. And the reason for why I'm doing that will become evident during the video. But uh, So please do consider. I don't want you to support my channel uh, monetarily at all. Um, I'd like you to consider going to this link and helping this town out because these are people, the town was leveled. People lost their houses, businesses. The town lost, I pretty much lost everything. I don't even know how the town still continues to exist, but the people exist and the, the government of the town is trying to do the right thing. And so, but I will get to that later in the video. Let's get right to what happened this weekend. TSR Con, also known as Free For All Con, but not free for you to play. <laughs> You're free to pay to play con. Uh, happened this weekend. Um, T new, the new TSR folks, a.k.a. Justin and Lanassa, have seen fit to squat on the same date in the same town, five minutes down the road, from Gary Con. And... It kind of worked out a little bit last year. They had about 60 to 70 people attend TSR Con. And the reports came about that it seemed like there were people that did leave Gary Con and pop over to take a look. Because it's the dungeon, you know, a little bit of nostalgia there. So that did happen. And it did seem to work out for them last year. It's not working out so well this year. They reserved Horticultural Hall. They had uh, numerous vendors who didn't show up. In fact, let's just take a quick look at that. And uh, this was the list of exhibitors. And the reserved exhibitor is most likely Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum, TSR Hobbies, the new TSR people. Because they did have a table at the con where they had a bunch of dungeon crawls that had been just shipped from China. And so uh, that's probably the reserved. Sash and Saber had reserved two tables and Tone Deaf Bards one and Astro Manatee another. Now, Astro Manatee suddenly disappeared from this list about two weeks before the con. And so I chatted up uh, the, the lady over at Astro Manatee, a very nice lady, um, nice conversation. And she was like, yeah, I signed up and I didn't realize who and what they were. And, but when I became aware of who new TSR was, Justin Lanassa, the anti-trans, the anti-homophobe, the racist. Uh, yeah. I wanted nothing to do with that. So I withdrew my being a vendor. And, uh, and initially I read a report on N world. that didn't even seem like tone, uh, tone deaf bards showed up, but I, Checked, and they did. There's some photographic evidence that they did. I uh, actually sent them a message, talked with the guy. who's was very helpful. Now, Sash and Saber, I tried to contact them, and I've not received any uh, answer back yet at this point. However, did some checking. Sash and Saber is in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. That's virtually Justin's backyard. So it's entirely possible that Sash, Sash and Saber is a crony of Justin. But there's absolutely no photographic evidence of them being at the con. Uh, there's no eyewitness of them being at the con. 
So in talking to people who had their names listed on the flyer for the first TSR con, it turns out that these people told me that if the way you got your name on that was like Justin would ask you, so are you going to come to my thing? And if you said, well, all right, yeah, thinking about it, which is just deferring it for right now. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll give you a non-committal answer. Thinking about it. <laughs> His response, that's a yes. Put them on. <laughs> Put them on the flyer. <laughs> so that was how you got on the flyer for the first TSR con. And in it's entirely possible that Sash and Saber, it, the guy running it, is potentially somebody Justin knows. He asked him. The guy said, gave him a noncommittal. Yeah, all right, I'll think about it. And Justin was like, well, sign this guy. That's as good as a yes. <laughs> and, and put him on there. So most of these people did not show up. Who did show up was Mick McArt and his little uh, production company, they're producing uh, self-published novels and uh, some some gaming related stuff, and the spices and lotions of healing. So, uh, yeah, he's the spice guy. <laughs> this is the uh, review on N World. It was uh, two guys who had visited the con, visited Gary Con, popped over to Horticultural Hall. You know, because they were using the opportunity uh, while at Gary Con to. See the Dungeon Hobby Shop, see uh, the Gygax House, see Horticultural Hall. They saw t the, uh, the TSR Con 2 was on. They checked, yeah, it's the new TSR people. We'll go in and look anyways. It's a chance to get inside and see the inside of the hall. And so they wrote <laughs> this review. This is rough. I will put a link for this in the show notes. You can read that. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but... They do describe here the, um, the vendor space included two folding tables. Um, so they describe the Spice Guy, which is uh, Mick McArt. And then they describe uh, we were greeted by a fellow in the center of the picture with Larry Elmore. And he told us we were welcome to look around if we wanted to play uh, or run a game. We could uh, pay 10 bucks for the day. He bragged that we just missed Larry Elmore. We told him we were attending Gary Con, and uh, we just wanted to check um, check out this place. He then proceeded to talk about how Gary Con was inferior uh, because they checked vaccine cards and required masks. And we told him that they didn't this year. And then he asked us how much we spent on Gary Con tickets, and we suggest and suggested this con was a better value. <laughs> And he ends his review with, we left after a few minutes. It was very dour atmosphere, full of sad people who had decided to stay in self-imposed exile while one of, the <laughs> one of the best con experiences I've ever had was occurring five minutes down the street. <laughs> well, that was pretty bad. So here's the thing. Last year, we got conflicting reports about a con attendance at TSR Con the digging through all of the noise, it looks like about 60 to 70 people attended, you know, and, and this is from eyewitness reports. This is from counting faces in photographs. There were a lot of photographs posted. It looks like about 60 to 70 people attended TSR con last year. And some of that appears to have been just curiosity going from Gary con to there. This year, uh, it does not look like that was the case, that uh, people were doing that. Now, some were. Some were doing it and reporting back to us about what's happening. But it really was not, you were not getting the spillover from Gary Khan. So they weren't getting that benefit. And I actually asked in, in my whole digging into the who was there and the vendors, was this vendor really there? Why didn't you show up asking people? Why didn't they show up? And finding people who were there, I, I got a hold of one person who was present at the con. And I asked him, I says, were there a lot of pop-ins from Gary Con? And they said, no. He says it was like six to 10, <laughs> not even 10. And you would know who the Gary Con people are 
based off of the lanyard they're wearing around their neck. In fact, that review on N-World mentions this photograph with Larry Elmore and the guy in the middle. Now, you'll notice that Larry Elmore's got a purple lanyard, and then his friend who came over here with him has a purple lanyard. This guy does not. This guy was running the con. This is not Justin Lanassa. This is Mick McArt. Mick McArt is one of the vendors, uh, you know, game designer, author, um, friend of Ernie Gygax. So he's a quasi public figure in his own right. <clears throat> you know, just being in the RPG hobby space and putting himself out there. He is the one described as saying that your $10, $10 got more for value when we come into this con than going to Gary Con, which is hysterical. This observer who was present at the con, well, you know, I didn't get permission to use their name. Don't want any repercussions for them from Justin because he can be quite vicious. Um, they would know. They would know who the Gary, Gary Khan pop-ins are. And, you know, and clearly, yes, Larry Elmore did show up. He popped in. And why did he do that? He he showed up to sell a painting to Lanassa. So Lanassa got his special guest by buying a painting from somebody who was already at Gary Khan. So, and I know from a conversation from somebody who would be in the know about what price range we are talking for an Elmore, Lanassa paid somewhere between four and eight grand for that painting. That's my estimate based off conversations I've had with people who would be in the know concerning an Elmore painting. Four to eight grand. So, yeah, if I was Elmore, I'd pop in and, yeah, all right, pay me. Thank you. Goodbye. And so that's why Elmore was there. Justin engineered his special guess by buying a painting, which is an absolute joke of a way to get a special guest there. But, hey, it worked for him, and he's got a photograph of him there. However, this photograph's really interesting because the pictured in this photograph is the day, day, day one TSR Con 2 free-for-all, all all Gaming, I have trouble reading that. All gaming, I'm not sure what that last word says there. Sign up sheet that looks like it was drawn by a third grader. Ooh, I'm so excited to sign my name to that. And it's blank. There's nobody there. The uh, report, the N World report, two tables, um, you know, handful of people. It was kind of dead, and it didn't even get the pop-ins from Gary Khan. Less than 10, between 6 and 10. So let's split the difference and call it 8. I had anticipated we were going to get inflated numbers on its attendance. We are going to begin because um, Tone Deaf Bards, they were so excited about this con that they did go to as a vendor. They haven't posted anything on their social media about it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. We're not posting about being there. <laughs> it was bad. Um, Nobody, you know, people are posting, but they're like, yeah, it was dismal. It was dour. <laughs> it was like, we're, we went back to Gary Khan's best con experience I've ever had. That kind of reports coming out of this. So I fully expected that we would see that full court press that we saw last year from Justin Lanassa saying, um, yeah. 120 attended. No, 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 it was 400. So, four, wait, uh, 800, 800 people. <laughs> yes, you had 800 people in the dungeon hobby shop violating the occupancy rules. <laughs> okay, can we, can we get you on record? Oh, wait, you did post that publicly in social media. Can we show that to the uh, building, you know, to the appropriate authorities in Lake Geneva that you uh, willfully violated your occupancy um, rules. Uh, you know, I, I expected that's what we were going to get with Horticultural Hall. But it was so obvious from all the photographs of empty tables and empty backgrounds 
and and then people making reports had just oh yeah it was dead there was nobody there and even when these two people showed up and then engaged with Mick McArt Mick McArt is not just in Lanassa but he's running the convention your own convention organizer does not hang around. He bounces and leaves a vendor to run the convention for him. Let that sink in. Um, that's just ludicrous. Uh, you're the convention organizer. You need to be there. You need to be running the show. If there's problems, you've got to troubleshoot it. That's all on you. you got to make this happen. you got to make sure people are having a good time. That's your responsibility. Where was Justin? You know, who knows? Not at his own convention, not managing it. <laughs> Letting the vendors manage his own convention. That's bad. So I thought we were going to get these inflated numbers and posts. You know, we had 5,000 people. We, we, we attend our thing. That's what I that's what I expected. And we didn't get that. And it was, was a little disappointing. It was a little surprising, a little shocking. You know what we did get? We got this post. This post was put on a Dungeon Hobby Shop post. And this is by Rod Cooper. And Rod Cooper in here seems to indicate that he went to elementary school with Justin Lonassa. Ooh. Now, that's interesting. But is it really Rod Cooper? Because you know what? Rod Cooper is a profile that was created back in November of last year. And it had one post that said, does anyone still play Dungeons & Dragons who lives in Central? And he names a particular state. He also named a particular high school. We'll get back to that. <clears throat> And uh, then this guy, Jack Keller, another profile, also created last November, uh, says, uh, I'm sure you can find some losers that will play make-believe with you on your favorite site, Grinder." <laughs> that is the profile. And that profile has sat dormant since that brief post back in November of last year. Until now, and it went on the Dungeon Hobby Shop page and posted this very vicious attack on Justin Lanassa. It says, man, you convention was, and I'm going to read it as it says here because some things should become obvious. Man, you convention was a total flop, a complete failure. I'm glad to see you are getting the karma that has been coming to you. No one there. What about these awards? Who won them? You are fake, a fraud. I'm glad to see Wizards of the Coast going to bankrupt you. You serve donuts, freaking donuts. What a bunch of losers. There's that word again, losers. Uh, you should have you should have came to came over to Gary Khan. It was fabulous. Oh, wait, you're banned like you are from. Over a dozen conventions now. List is growing. Just like in middle school. No one liked you. Everyone hated you. No one could. Uh, no one would game with you. Um, up to your same BS as an adult. And remember, even in school, your worthless dad was not around. Why is he now? Now, <clears throat> this isn't interesting because... I've sort of become a little bit of an expert in low Lanassian. It's a dialect of English, barely registers as English, and this reads like low Lanassian. And it uses some words, losers, that are very popular with a certain person in our gaming industry. So what I'm obviously hinting at is I don't think that th this guy, Rod Cooper, really exists. As I specified, new profile. Now, let's get back to that. So this attack on Lanassa 
sort of sets up the bona fides for this guy, Rod Cooper. But it sounds like the attack that was on him by Jack Keller, another new profile from back in November, you know, and uses the same wording, losers. And um, eventually the post was deleted, and then Rod said this, that bag of dicks, Lanassa, has me blocked. Now, by the way, I should do a little PSA here. We're going to we're gonna have some profanity. It's going to be some profanity. Uh, I'm going to try to edit it in my speaking. But the profanity will be on here, and some of it's quite bad. There's going to be some F-bombs. There's going to be some F-words that are kind of slang derogatory terms for someone who's gay. Um, they're going to be there. There's going to be a, a, a slang word. Um, slang derogatory word used for people who are trans. Uh, and I've, I've blurred some of these things. Um, some of them I have not, because um, we're all adults, we read it. But some of them might stir up a little bit. So those I actually did blur a little bit, the little smudge tool. And I've deleted, uh, in what's coming, I've deleted a lot of personal information on people just not going to go there. So uh, I should have done that little caveat at the beginning of the video. I apologize. I did not, but Rod Cooper, he specified he was from a particular state and he specified he went to a particular high school. And this state is the state where a certain person who was a subpoenaed witness in the Watsi lawsuit uh, lives. And that high school is the very high school that that individual in the in the Watsi law, subpoenaed witness in the Watsi lawsuit actually went to high school. Uh, and you take that in light with this, hey, anybody out there in Central, you know, where the subpoenaed witness lives, play D and D, you know, he's trying to get in with the, you know, but it's a false flag. He's trying to be slick and undercover and fool us all so we don't know who it is. So um, I was I became aware of this conversation last night. And so th this individual said, hey, um, just saw your post on Justin Lass's convention. Do you know him personally? Who are you, may I ask? I'm someone who despises Lanassa and his BS. Yeah, I went to school with him. What's he done to you? I just find that question to be off. What's he done to you? Um, I, you know, I, I just think most people would be like, yeah, I went to school with him. Uh, what about it? Or, um, you know, why do you ask? But it seems like he's trying to get this person talking about Lanassa. He says, I'm just someone who works to fight his racism, bigotry, lies about his military service and being a federal, being a federal law enforcement. And then Mr. Cooper, allegedly Mr. Cooper, says, federal law enforcement, bah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, what the ever-loving hell. He seriously is still claiming that. In school, he used to lie about being in the delayed entry program for special forces. Justin Lanassa is no federal cop. He never has been. He is from PA, a loser, and was a liar and bragger. That should be bragger, but bragger in school. Well, can you tell me about him in school? He was a bragger, a bully. He picked on one kid to the point where the kid removed himself from school. The guy is trash. Stay away from him. And then, oh, I am. Um, oh, I am. Do you know anything about him now? Millet's. Uh, military was he in army and coast guard i know he went in the army and he came home claiming uh he was in special forces which is uh bs watching watch out for the guy he has scum and will do anything to get what he wants he's also a blatant racist i've got to go things to do now um i believe all these statements by mr cooper about justin lanassa okay I believe when he says um, that he, you know, he's not, he was not a federal cop. I believe that. I believe Mr. Cooper's speaking truth here. 
Uh, when he says that Justin was a, a braggart and a bully in school, I believe that. And we'll, we'll get to why. Uh, the, he talks about picking on one kid to the point the kid was had to remove himself from school. I believe that. When he says that Justin is trash, I believe him. Uh, absolutely. And uh, that he lied about being in special forces. I believe him. Now, let's – this conversation, some total, ended. He says, I got to go, things to do. So let's go to – it picked up again later that day. And so you say you went to school at – and this is the school that that subpoenaed federal witness go, went to, high school. He's, he's – ha, 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 ha. I know he was horrible. Oh, no, no. He says, you say you went to the school. Mr. Lewis, ha, ha. What a piece of crap as a principal. And he's like, yeah, ha, 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 ha. I know he was horrible. He says, man, an old names to school alumni. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Says Cooper. Oh, uh, when did you graduate? I went there only one year. Uh, I didn't went there for, I didn't, I didn't, I went there for a couple of years, but lie the schools. I don't know what he's trying to say there that he was trying to lie. About, I don't know. So, we both hate Lanassa. Be careful of him. He is a loser. It's that word again. <clears throat> oh, yes. You're uh, you're from Lansing. I'm from, names the town. Uh, we need to gain, we need to gain, my friend. Heck yes. So how do you know Lanassa? I did work for him. Okay, this was a this was an unforced mistake on Mr. Cooper's part. He's trash. Uh, stay away from him. He was a loser. He was a braggart. And then suddenly he goes, I did work for him. Uh, and so my friend says, what work did you do for him? I thought you went to school with him. Because I did. <clears throat> because he can't keep the lies straight. He's like, oh, you can't see it behind my thing here. Oops. And then because he can't keep the lies straight, he says, oh, I did after school. I hated him because he was trash and a bragger. Nobody hated him. Everybody, every, nobody would game with him. Everybody hated him. <laughs> but I worked with him, even though I knew he was trash. <laughs> Makes no sense. So uh, my friend says, oh, okay, yeah, me and him do not get along. He owes me seven grand. Mr. Cooper, no way. You need to sue him and call the cops. Did you call the cops on him? That's an interesting question. Did you call the cops on him? He, Mr. Cooper wants to know if you called the cops on him. Yeah, question for you. Uh, I went, uh, you went to, names to school. The principal was Mr. McCann. There was no Mr. Lewis. Also, you're not in the yearbooks. And mask comes off. Uh, I heard you scammed a bunch of people in your fishing, in your publishing business, and also your kid died of a drug overdose, loser. There's that word again. He's very free with it, loser. So all of these statements were using the word loser. It's a word that Justin likes to use. Oh, how nice. Well, Justin, since you just verified it's you, uh, this ends. I'm no Lanassa, poor fat. Poor fat, but and he names the guy. Uh, so maybe some autopsy pics need to be posted. <laughs> You'll note, this is classic you know, Twitter Justin Lanassa. Okay, all the sock puppets accounts he had on Twitter. This is classic Justin right here. What, nothing to say about that loser? I, I smile at your comments as the day is coming when we'll both be sitting in front of a judge and you will be explaining a lot. I'm not Lanassa. And then here we get this little F word, derogatory term for somebody who happens to be gay. Uh, I wish I was. Wait a minute. Justin's trash, braggart, <laughs> all these things. But he wishes he was Justin Lanassa, a real effing man who does what he says and has cash, has, he dropped the S, cash, to back it up. Yup, while... F word, derogatory word for gay people. Uh, and then a derogatory word for trans begins with 
the letters T R A N, uh, Tran Cox, uh, like you and your loser friends play online. How does it feel to be poor? Names my friend, and then always broke. B R O E K. Now I don't know what that word is. Perhaps he meant broke. But you know what's funny is you could that word probably is pronounced broke. B R O E. Okay, you probably would pronounce it as broke, I guess. And uh, so then he says, bye, Justin. And then a tirade starts in. You, F word for derogatory term for a gay person. Uh, losers like you are so funny. All you do is scramble to pay bills. Watch, uh, watch your wives, plural out with other men and attack real men. <laughs> men with real money making real games. Uh, where are your gayest? Uh, poor welfare. Uh, want to talk about your co uh, coming prison sentence? Hello, loser. Loser, cuck. It's almost like Bueller. Bueller? <laughs> He's just going on and on and on. <laughs> desperate to get, desperate to get under this person's skin. So I became aware of this conversation. It was shared with me, and I could not help myself. I went on Mr. Cooper's profile, and I went to this old post from November 20th, 2022, and I, I intentionally identified this guy as Justin. Without calling him Justin, because he'd be like, "I'm not Justin," but I call I call I I specifically identify him as Justin, and I do that by saying, "I read your pesky goblins module, not uh, not sure you play D and D." A little dig, because if you read it, it, it was so you cannot play that module game, pesky goblins. It is unplayable as it is. Totally unplayable as it is. It, 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 it's, a, it's, it's garbage. But I tell I say, I address him. I read your module and he doesn't deny it. And, I, you know, I poked the bear here a little bit, but this was just for a little subtle more confirmation that this is Justin. And he fails to deny that he wrote Pesky Goblins. Because if I said, hey, I, I read your book, War and Peace. You'd be like, I didn't write War and Peace. Okay. So, and, <laughs> you know, and then immediately I'm like, oh, well, you poked the bear. So now you're going to get this vomitous spew from this guy. And uh, so here's his response. Doesn't even deny writing pesky goblins, which is an admission. Um, oh, Thomas Frault. He knows who I am. And, oh, it's the Goonies dad. This is an insult Justin's used with me to attack my daughter. Uh, so that's all right, because I've since learned some things about pesky goblins. I tell him, I talked to the guy in California that contributed to pesky goblins, but you failed to give him a writing credit. Because, you know, when, a write, when you don't give somebody credit for writing something, or you don't give an artist credit for their, their artwork, that's just low, it, it, particularly in this hobby. It, that's just low. And what happened here was that the PR guy who worked for uh, TSR back in 2001, uh, 2021 <clears throat> brought in a gentleman from California that he knew, a friend of his, who had a place called Goblin's Hollow. And brought this guy to, to work specifically on pesky goblins. This guy was all about the goblins. And so I tracked this guy down and talked to him. And he estimated that he had contributed about 20% to pesky goblins. That probably warrants a writing credit. Now, Justin completely cut him out. Ditched his artwork. He had good artwork, actually, too. Ditched his artwork and um, massively changed uh, a lot of the things so that he could attack specific people through pesky goblins. You know, it, it's a horror show of a RPG product. 
the thing about this guy in California is that this gentleman's town, a wildfire went through it back last August, leveled the town. Business is gone. Houses gone. Fire, your fire station's gone. Houses of government, anything connected to the town. It's just gone. It's just absolutely leveled. <clears throat> And this guy, so he's lost everything. He's lost his house. He's lost his business. Live, you know, virtually, you know, like living out of a car. I guess I don't. You know, this life hands him this this kick in the in the nuts. House gone, business gone. Got to rebuild. You know, it's possible to do it. And he seems like he's in a good place mentally. Talking with him, he seemed very positive. So, but. Uh, you get this kick in the nuts from this wildfire. <laughs> and then just to add, just to add a little bit more salt to the wound, Justin Lanassa kicks him in the nuts and says, screw you. I'm not going to give you the writing credit you deserve. And completely cuts him out. Now, having read Pesky Goblins, I'm not so sure any reasonable individual would really want the credit, the writing credit, to have their name on there along with Justin. It's probably just as well. But my point here is more about that this is how, for those of you out there who are the few Kool-Aid drinkers who still hang on to Justin, some of you are artists, some of you are writers and creators. This is how Justin treats creators. Just, oh, you're down. You know, what are you going to do? You're too busy rebuilding. You, there's no way you could even sue me over this. So I'll just cut your name out. Screw you. No, no, not even give you a writing credit. This is how he treats creatives. So that's interesting. So I, I bring that up just a little, put a little dig in. And he, he goes right for, let me see if I can get under Tom's skin. Um, I wish I make that game. Smart men who know games made it. Because, you know, Justin calls himself a genius. Uh, what have you made? Nothing but some kid with crooked eyes. And he does the Goonies picture. And then I responded to that with, I've made good friends. So this is straight, full Twitter Justin Lanassa. This is the Justin Lanassa we know and love from all the Twitter sock puppet accounts. <laughs> and he's attempting to uh, get under my skin here. And, um, you know, he doesn't have the power to. Does not have the power to get under my skin about this. Let me tell you about my daughter. My daughter had one random mutation in her genetic code. And it caused a series of birth defects. It's a series of birth defects that have been given a name. That name is APERT, A-P-E-R-T, syndrome, APERT syndrome. It's kind of rare. <clears throat> when she was born, we were told that it was three births in a million or one birth in 100,000. Now, I might not be the sharpest mathematician, but those numbers don't add up. And so I quickly deduced they don't know. <laughs> and they're guessing. They're making those numbers up. They're estimating. They're guessing. So I, I always find that really funny, but it's like about three, you know, I don't know, three births in a million, maybe a little more, maybe, maybe not. They just don't know. Uh, and luckily she was born in Boston and in Boston are the only two doctors in the world who have ever written a book, a medical book on this particular, they, practice at Children's Hospital Boston. So <clears throat> my daughter is special. She has special needs. But beyond that, she's really a special person because she's one of the most loving, kind persons out there in the world that to know her is to be blessed. It's just absolutely special. And I came to this realization at her birth that God had this really special child 
and he's up in heaven and he's looking down on the earth and he's saying, I need someone that I'm going to entrust this special child to, to raise. And he's looking and he says, all right, I picked Tom. I was chosen. I was chosen. Special mission given to me to be the father. I was chosen. And, you know, I thought I was all that in a bag of chips. And I, I realize now that God gives us children to teach us we're not all that in a bag of chips, that we really don't know things, that we need to learn things. And so this was one of the most special things that ever happened to me in my life, coming the father of a child with Apert syndrome, with special needs, who is so loving, so caring, has a strong mothering instinct, finds the other kids who are not being included. You know, I, I, the teachers in kindergarten, yeah, she finds the other kids that nobody's playing with and, and gets them and brings them in and, you know, so they're part of it. She she's was like a gatekeeper, bringing other kids in and making sure that they got played. They got played with too, same as everybody else, and uh, just absolute peach of a human being. Uh, the most awesome thing that ever happened to me was the birth of my daughter, and I cherish it, absolutely cherish it more than anything else in this life. Okay, you can't put a monetary value on that. I don't. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing that compares to that. And I am very happy for Justin that his daughter uh, appears to be normal, appears to not have any special needs. Uh, she's cute as a button. And uh, I hope she brings him a lot of joy because I, I feel like uh, that, you know, that is the, you know, kids bring us joy. You know, we, we look on as parents and we, and we find that I, I, to me, that's just a wonderful thing. But Justin, you have no power. You have no power to mock my kid. You have no power to mock. You have no power over me. I find nothing but joy in my daughter. So go ahead, Justin. You want to mock? You wanna you wanna mock uh, somebody with a dead daughter? Talk about autopsy pics. You're such a horror show of a human being. To to say that that's not what a real man is. A real man has character. A real man has values. Money does not make a real man. And money, what are you gonna do when you lose all your money? In the Watsi case. What are you going to do when you're ordered to pay Eric Stina's uh, legal fees? Because the slap law in New York State demands that you do. What are you going to do when you lose all your money? You're going to admit that you're not a real man then because you have no money? Because that's what's coming in your future. And it kind of makes you sad. That that's your, that's your measuring stick. I'm a real man because I have money. You're not a real man compared to Bill Gates, then. You're chump change. There's always somebody bigger. There's always somebody bigger out there. <laughs> real men have character. Real men have ethics. Real men have values. Money is not is none of that. I would take a poor man with ethics and value as my friend over a rich man with no ethics, no values, no morals. I'd take a poor man any day who had ethics, morals, and values. Absolutely. Okay, Justin. Thanks for confirming that was you. 
thanks for the uh, sticking your foot in it because I'm sure somebody's going to be able to use this claim of 10K sales to demand discovery of your business records. You claimed it. They'll just use that as this is the reason why we need to have all those records. He's selling all this. We got it. We need to see an accurate accounting. So awesome sauce, dude. Awesome sauce. And going on and attacking yourself, I think all those statements about yourself were true statements. When you called yourself a braggart, I think that was a true statement. When you talked about bullying a kid in school so much that he had to be pulled out, I suspect that to be a true statement. When you claimed that you were delayed entry for special forces, <laughs> that uh, when you made that claim that you had that Justin had said those things, I believe that because of the federal officer claims, Blackwater claims, all the crazy other claims, FBI, FBI contacts. <laughs> so I totally believe that you have claimed you were special forces. I totally believe that. I, you know, when, when you spoke about yourself being trash, I believe that. I believe that. Braggart, all of these things that you as Rod Cooper said about yourself, completely believable. I think you spoke truth without meaning to. So very interesting episode in gaming stupid, game convention stupid, I guess. Thanks a lot, Justin. This was illuminating and entertaining. I had a good time. This is Tom for Tabletop Tap Room signing out. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. Don't forget, check that link in the show notes. And please do consider um, donating to that town that was just leveled by a wildfire. Um, let's do something positive to help people out who are, uh, you know, more desperate, you know, less fortunate than us. Mm -hmm.